You can clearly see the disappointment with this school on her face. The younger sister leads a humble life filled with love at home. Having endured hardships since childhood, she is somewhat timid and submissive. The older sister adopted into a loving family early on. As a result, she has a somewhat arrogant and assertive personality. Due to an unexpected incident, they get a chance to swap lives. Hoonvai has lived in a loving home since childhood. Her sister, Jia Jean, faces bullying at school today. Hoonvai takes her sister to confront the bullies, but their mother shows disdain towards both sisters and refuses to apologize. Feeling powerless, the older sister brings her sister home and advises her to start learning self-defense. They stick together, caring for each other. In contrast, Hoonvai, identical in appearance to Hoonvai, enjoys the same meticulous care from her mother. Today, Moonbai's class goes on a field trip. On the trip, Moonbai watches Ian compete in a national swimming competition. Unable to attend in person, she can only follow it through small online images. Seeing Ian win, Moonbai can't contain her happiness. The deep bond between the two sisters remains strong. Upon arrival, she receives a disturbing message. The message deeply unsettles her. Moonbai is constantly bullied by classmates, making her a victim of school violence. But she endures it all to avoid troubling the school principal. Moreover, the bully's father is influential and wealthy. Hoonbai suppresses her suffering to maintain a comfortable life, so Yun flaunts her father's scholarship fund. Hoonbai compromises to meet her. She wants So Young to talk to her father, hoping to lessen her burden at the orphanage. But stubborn So Young refuses. Driven by anger, Hoonbai retaliates. Suddenly, an unexpected incident occurs, and Hoonbai instinctively shields someone. At this moment, Hoonbai discovers the existence of her long-lost twin. Hoonbai manages to get her phone number. They both end up at the same cafe. But they pass each other like strangers. As the field trip nears its end, the whole class takes a group photo. But Unvai is nowhere to be found. Despite the class searching all over the mountain, they can't find her. Meanwhile, Unvai accidentally injures So Young. So Young's father pressures the school to expel Unvai. Unable to resist any longer, Unvai asks the teacher to let her stay until the class ends. Leaving now would crush her under the weight of expulsion. Returning to class, the bullies unexpectedly mock Unvai even further. They gang up on her again, bullying Unvai and recording a video. After a long and grueling day, Unvai wearily leaves school. After days of fruitless searching, today Unvai's mother receives a call from the hospital. Her emotions overwhelm her upon hearing her daughter's voice, but another piece of news shatters her. That her daughter Unvai may suffer temporary or permanent memory loss. So Young is preparing to meet Unvai again. Seeing someone who looks just like Unvai, she starts bullying again. But suddenly, Moonbai's mother appears and pulls her away. It's then that So Young realizes her mistake. On this day, Ian faces true failure. He sits there, contemplating what Moonbai said before she disappeared. That night, they meet again, Ian intending to touch the wound on Moonbai's neck. But she pulls away, saying he can't help her. Ian still can't understand why Moonbai has changed so much. In the present, Yian finds out Moonbai is in the hospital and rushes there. Moonbai has amnesia and doesn't recognize him. Both stand in the elevator, silent. Ian thinks there's something Unbai can't say. He hugs her and tells her it's okay to be safe. After calming down, Ian is stunned to learn Unbai has amnesia. But when Unbai asks if they're close, both deny it. At home, Unbai's mother tries to help her regain her memories. Unbai and her mother look at old photos from her childhood. When she couldn't find her baby pictures, she always wondered. Her mother didn't hide it either, she told her she was adopted. But anyway, Unbai grew up, so this matter wasn't a big deal. Today, like any other day, Unbai went to school as usual. The whole class was very surprised to see her. The Unbai who used to be so shy is now so confident. Unbai never used to ask questions or talk before, but now it's different. When they see Unbai losing her memory, they try to help her remember her past. They go out to eat together and have fun. Due to insufficient funds, they were brought to the police station. The one who paid for all of that mess was none other than the homeroom teacher. But being a teacher doesn't make you rich. He had to bear with it and ask the karaoke owner for a 12-month installment plan. The next morning, Unbai woke up early to exercise. Then she met Ian, who was also jogging. She was also very surprised that she woke up on time without an alarm. She thought she was a diligent bee before, but Ian denied it immediately. When she arrived at school, Unbai was trying to open her personal locker. Due to memory loss, she couldn't recall the password. She realized that a classmate named Young Un had been absent all day yesterday. Only Young Un and the teacher came to the classroom and asked Unbai to open her locker. When she forgot the password, the teacher requested a hammer. Taekwon wielded the chair with swagger and broke the lock. When the locker opened, there was only a small box inside with precious jewelry. Young Un then confirmed that this was the stuff her mother lost before. Of course, all suspicions fell on Unbai, and she couldn't remember anything to defend herself. The teacher asked Unbai to talk, but Ian immediately pulled her out of this mess because Ian didn't want Unbai to hear any opinions from outside. 
Just believing in herself is enough. Meanwhile, Young Eun is explaining to the teacher that Eun Bai threatened her to give her money. Otherwise, she would have been beaten, so Young Eun took her mother's jewelry to exchange. But when the teacher insisted on inviting parents to clarify, Young Eun wanted to cover up. Meanwhile, on the playground, when Eun Bai saw Young Eun's angry mother coming to school, she questioned herself about Young Eun's past situation, because she thought they used to bully her or exclude her. But she bluntly denied this thought. Despite her heart's burden, Eun Bai longed to clarify with Young Eun but faced a relentless busy tone. The next day, as a habit, Ian waited for Eun Bai to exercise together. When they sat down to talk, he noticed that the wound on Eun Bai's neck had healed, but she had no memory of being injured. Switching scenes to the school restroom, Eun Bai accidentally overheard classmates gossiping about her, making her curious. She didn't know what kind of person she was. She stormed angrily to the rooftop and encountered Taekwong. From this crow's mouth, Eun Bai learned more about her past self. She didn't pay much attention to Taekwong even when she lost her memory. Meanwhile, the school was investigating all students in the class. The school investigated their relationship. Young Eun frequently used money to socialize, buying gifts and treating friends to outings. Only Eun Bai never accepted those gifts. And she never forced Young Eun to hang out. But after this incident, classmates kept thinking that Eun Bai was pretending to lose her memory to harm Young Eun, which made them angry. So Eun Bai's close friends gradually turned their backs on her. And this image inadvertently triggered Eun Bai's memories. This was the moment when Eun Bai was bullied by Young Eun's group. Although feeling confused, after receiving encouragement from her mother, Eun Bai felt more confident in herself. That she wouldn't bully Young Eun as everyone thought. Switching to the end of the school day, Eun Bai caught Young Eun meddling with her locker. After voicing her speculation that they had swapped lockers before the field trip, hadn't they? It turns out that the jewelry set was originally in Young Eun's locker. Feeling unable to hide, Young Eun revealed her cards and said, because she resented everything about Eun Bai, including her arrogance. Later, Eun Bai went to the pool to talk to Ian. While they were playing in the water, Eun Bai slipped and fell into the pool. In the water, she remembered her past memories. Once again, the images were Eun Bai's memories resurfacing. That day, Eun Bai had jumped into the sea wanting to end her life. The one who saved her from being bullied was Eun Bai herself. It can be said that everything she has now belonged to Eun Bai before, and she herself is Eun Bai who grew up in an orphanage. Finding Eun Bai's diary, she was sure that all the past memories were true. All indicating she wasn't truly Eun Bai. Eun Bai finally found her real mother amazing. And holding onto her as a mother was also surprising. The next day, Eun Bai was called before the council about the jewelry. What surprised Young Eun was that. Eun Bai admitted to all the bullying behaviors, even though she didn't do anything. Because she was a victim of school violence. Whether in thought or physicality, Eun Bai understood Young Eun's deepest fear. Not only that, she sent Young Eun a message, take my hand. Her emotions could be described as overflowing, because she finally found a real friend for herself. Despite resolving all misunderstandings, Young Eun chose to transfer schools, leaving only trembling chibi pictures of her friends, to replace words of gratitude for walking together for a while. Eun Bai received a message that they would reunite after some time has passed. But in Eun Bai's heart was a stormy sky. Because the memories came back, she couldn't live with Eun Bai's identity anymore. After rereading Eun Bai's diary, she truly understood that her twin sister was a mysterious birthday gift giver. It should have been Eun Bai who was adopted by mom at that time, not herself. Therefore, Eun Bai decided to return to the hospital in hopes of finding her twin sister. From the police, Eun Bai learned that her twin sister had passed away, and the day she jumped into the water was with her own identity. In Eun Bai's heart rose a painful difficulty when facing her own death photo. At this moment, mom also arrived after learning the truth about Eun Bai's identity. She still deceived herself that the person in front of her was Eun Bai, not herself. This made Eun Bai even more sad and could only apologize to mom. After calming down and hearing Eun Bai's circumstances, mom felt sorry for the hardworking girl who worked to help the head nurse. She was bullied by friends to the point of attempting suicide, and Eun Bai still hovered in her mind thinking she was the cause of her twin sister's death. Looking at Eun Bai's departing back, mom remembered the brief memories of the two together. Remembering Eun Bai calling her, mom couldn't help but chase after her, hugging and holding Eun Bai, hoping she could continue to be with Eun Bai, continue the happy life as before. Perhaps mom really had feelings for Eun Bai's sincerity. Or maybe it was because mom couldn't let Eun Bai's place in her heart change scenes at the pool. Ian, with his strong body, was striving to train under the cold water. A shoulder pain came, making him feel uneasy. Returning home, Ian helped his father load their heads onto the car. All of his father's hopes were placed on him, even the oil stains on his clothes made his father feel uneasy. For his father, Ian just needed to get wet. On the other side, Eun Bai returned home with mom, the memories returning made it difficult for Eun Bai to call mom. Feeling mom's presence made Eun Bai very happy. Seeing her understanding daughter, mom remembered Eun Bai and couldn't help but shed tears. Is this substitution the best for Eun Bai? 
On the way to school, Ian saw Umbai on the bus and immediately sat next to her, but Umbai remained unaware. When Ian deliberately teased her if she really was Umbai, Umbai seemed to be lost in time. But with his handsome and adorable appearance, Ian quickly made Umbai smile again. Upon arriving at class, the two best friends noticed that her handwriting was different from Umbai's before. To avoid confrontation, Umbai went to the school clinic where she met Taekwon again. For some reason, in front of this guy, Umbai was considered a crazy overachiever. This relationship also became much closer. When Taekwon mentioned that his mother was a famous fortune teller to Umbai. Upon returning to class, Umbai received a strange message related to someone named Shirjin. Previously, she had met Shirjin's mother, who mentioned that the two used to be very close. Upon hearing this name, the teacher seemed very surprised but claimed not to know this student. As Umbai returned to class, she intervened in Taekwon's fight and got injured by him. By the time she realized it, Ian had pushed Taekwon away from Umbai. Later, Umbai approached Ian to ask about the events of the previous night. Because her close friend saw her with a wound on her neck fighting with a tall man. Umbai thought it was Ian, but he denied seeing her at all. Ian then returned to his room, contemplating whether or not to regret. Deciding not to regret, Ian took out his phone to arrange a meeting with Umbai. Meanwhile, she was wandering around and encountered Taekwon. At that moment, Ian found them enjoying each other's company. The next day, a new student transferred to Umbai's class. As if destined, this newcomer entered. It was So Young, who used to bully Umbai. They quickly encountered each other, and So Young didn't seem surprised to see Umbai. Although unaware of S0 Young's intentions, she apologized to Umbai. His actions at the hospital and his desire to reconcile seemed sincere. That evening, Umbai was reading an article about her recent departure. She then received an email from So Young. It mentioned a page number of a book in the library. But upon finding the book, she didn't discover anything unusual. Returning to class, she saw So Young chatting happily with his close friends. When Umbai approached, So Young looked embarrassed and gave her seat back. So Young now knew about Yu Umbai's accident at her previous residence. In his heart, he felt uneasy, seeing her troubled expression. During lunch, when friends invited Sua Young to eat together, he expressed fear of eating alone, making Umbai cough. Seeing this, Ian gave her water. Taekwon snatched it away, fiercely confronting So Young, saying, If you don't want to eat alone, do you need someone to feed you? This guy must be allergic to sincerity. Not stopping there, Soo Young deliberately mentioned that Umbai looked exactly like her old classmate. When Soo Young wanted to take a picture of Umbai to send to the bullies, Taekwon's sudden appearance startled her, causing her to drop her phone unarmed. Umbai realized her intentions and angrily left. In the evening, Ian texted Umbai about her sleep, and she unexpectedly emerged from her own house. They ended up eating noodles together because Umbai was hungry. Ian was upset, blaming her for forgetting him and wanting to help her regain her memory. But Umbai refused. At home, looking at a photo of Umbai's sister, she told her that Ian liked her a lot. The next day, So Young deliberately acted pitiful and apologized to Umbai for the theft incident. Despite the expectant gazes of her classmates, Umbai remained angry and left. Shortly after, she met another classmate who seemed upset upon hearing the news. Shirjin continued to send messages, claiming to have been missing since last year. She found the book Shirjin mentioned in the message. This time, she truly found a sheet of paper filled with writing. As a genuine Vietnamese, I can't understand a word of it, but Umbai's shocked expression says it all. Meanwhile, Ian changed his clothes and his shoulder pain returned. When Umbai saw the coach excluding an injured person from the team, he didn't dare speak up about the abnormalities in his own body, because boasting to Ian is his father's only pride. Turning back to Umbai, she found her sister's diary entries. She discovered that her sister had been stalked and threatened under the name Shirjin. Umbai endured silently, afraid to tell her mother, thinking she deserved punishment. To learn more about her sister, Umbai went to meet Ian, wanting to know what she used to be like. The boy also wanted Umbai to make a wish for him. If he helped her remember herself and then took her home. As Taekwon sent a menacing message, promising to toss her bag into the river. Surprisingly, Ian arrived, and the atmosphere reeked of intense jealousy. Umbai wanted to call to inquire about her loving home. But the person who answered was her disguising sister, almost exposing her, but quickly hung up. And this scene was witnessed by both mothers, one of whom hugged her warmly. The next morning, So Young began to inquire about Umbai's changes, which is also Umbai now. Then she arranged to talk to Umbai. Facing her familiar reaction, So Young concluded that she was the Umbai who had been bullied. While So Young was trying to teach Umbai a lesson, Taekwon gradually grew stern, leaving her speechless. Umbai then took the initiative to turn the tables. Declaring that Umbai, who was bullied by So Young, was her twin sister. This time, the fierce little guy must be truly scared. Umbai appeared strong, but only when out of So Young's sight did she truly collapse in fear. Leaving school, she saw Taekwon always behind her. Umbai thought he was curious about the situation between her and So Young, so he followed. But he kept denying it, saying he was worried Umbai would be in danger. 
Embarrassed and angry, he stormed off, leaving her speechless. Cut to Ian returning home, catching his father in a conversation with the landlord. His father, burdened with rent debt, pretended not to hear. But later, he contacted a manager to introduce him as a former star. Hoping to earn extra income to help his father. Even though his dream was just swimming, not wanting to become any kind of idol. Meanwhile, Umbai was shopping with her mother when Ian called her to meet at the library. With her modest height, Umbai thought she could reach books at 8 meters high. Luckily, Ian showed up just in time, as if scripted in a Korean drama. So, since height often helps, start adding calcium from now on. Then Ian led her to the football field to play some game resembling discus throwing, which was fun but tiring, so they rested. Hearing Umbai apologize for not having memories of the two of them, Ian gently stroked her head to encourage her. After hearing it, she felt relieved, making Umbai laugh happily. The next day, Umbai's best friend eagerly shared her news about the upcoming advertisement photo shoot. Arriving there, she was even more excited to see Ian there too, hoping for a couple's photo with him, but life had other plans. Ian was indeed the main character, but she only played a supporting role with another girl. Feeling disappointed and embarrassed, she didn't perform well and got scolded, so Young proposed making amends, but his face remained unfriendly. He sought to reconcile with Umbai, but Taekwon's timely arrival protected her, driving off the upset girl. When school was over, he kindly escorted Umbai home. This part was romantic, unlike the awkward start of the movie. When Taekwon returned, he bumped into Ian and asked why he was leaving Umbai's house. Then, receiving a vague answer, Ian became jealous again. The next day, fate had them sitting side by side as Taekwon and Ian swapped seats in class. In PE class, everyone happily played ball together. Only Taekwon and Ian seemed to play aggressively, showing off their good looks. Immediately after, classmates mocked the magazine photos featuring Umbai as a background character. This made her extremely embarrassed and want to be alone. Seeing this, So Young took the opportunity to approach Song Ju, praising him and mentioning his uncle's entertainment company. This was aimed at getting closer to her. As expected, during lunch, So Young also arrived with Song Ju. This made Umbai annoyed and leave, with Ian immediately following her. Upon Yian's caring inquiries, Umbai expressed her anger, feeling overwhelmed. With the secrets she was keeping, Ian was genuinely hurt this time, so he angrily left. The next day, tensions rose as Songju decided to audition for So Young's uncle's company. Feeling uneasy, Umbai warned Songju not to trust So Young. Of course, Songju disregarded her words, while So Young appeared very unpleasant. Not only Songju, but even Yian also ignored Umbai. Exhausted, she collapsed on her desk. Only our adorable Taekwong didn't want Umbai to be left alone. Seeing that Umbai seemed to understand him, Taekwon felt ashamed and pushed her away. He swiftly withdrew his study abroad application and informed his father. He decided not to go abroad, and news of So Young's past bullying spread rapidly among classmates, causing the girl to decide to confide in her classmates. Originally thought to be Taekwon who spread this rumor. So Young showed him Umbai's handwriting and, after losing her mind, Umbai became So Young to prove that Umbai was impersonating someone else. At this point, he remembered Umbai's words and realized that she was indeed in trouble. Then he ran to drag Umbai out of class, despite her resistance, accidentally seen by Ian. He tried to catch the bus with faith and hope of catching up. But in the end, he could only watch the bus fade away. Suddenly, Taekwon grabbed Umbai's hand and said, at least one person should call you by your real name, and that should be me. In the end, Taekwon couldn't bear to see Umbai always acting guilty. And he didn't want Umbai to be bullied either, so he spoke up about the matter. Yian noticed the similarity in the handwriting of the two sisters, and also offered to help Umbai. Then she returned home, saw Yian's trophy for a long time, and decided to wait for him outside, unaware that he was also contemplating texting her. Much later, Ian sat waiting outside her house, while Umbai waited for him at the swimming pool gate. The next morning, Ian ran past Umbai's house and waved at her, chasing him on her bike. She almost gave up when the chain broke. Helpless, she called out Ian's name, tears falling. That's how the broken relationship was mended. Later, Umbai looked at her sister's name tag and decided to remove her curly hair, adopting her old style. Her demeanor was more confident when she met So Young, wanting to expose what she had done to Umbai before to get So Young sent to a reform school. As soon as So Young laid hands on her, Umbai immediately resisted. Her face really resembled Umbai's attitude. And in English class, she divided the students into groups for exercises. It seemed she didn't want students to pass the subject, inadvertently putting Ian and two other guys, namely Taekwong and Kite, in the same group. Shortly after, Ian and Taekwong had a tense warning scene about not disturbing Umbai. While Umbai on this side was also doing group exercises, she discovered that she was in the class outing photo but couldn't find her sister Umbai in it. She began investigating a call made by her sister a month ago, sensing a clue, discovering a strange number that called the night before the incident. When Umbai called back, a voice startled her. 
It turned out to be her friend who had previously told her about So Young's death. At this point, Woombai realized that her sister had met this friend. The text messages from So Young and the scar on Woombai's neck were linked to this discovery. Both of them seemed to have done something wrong to So Young, causing a sense of guilt to gradually engulf them. When questioned about her relationship with So Young, Woombai received the answer that both she and her friend hated So Young. After returning home, unable to understand, Woombai saw her mother, but didn't ask her mother more about So Young's matter. She just wanted to sleep with her mother to ease her mind at this moment. Yayan sitting outside the house. Umbai messaged her, knowing she would go to the gym. So he sped off like lightning, turned back to the gym to wait for Umbai as if it were a coincidence. Then they went out to eat, have fun, watch movies, and went to the riverside to skip stones together. Just then, Yayan noticed a scar that shouldn't exist on Umbai. And without thinking, Umbai was explaining it. Then Ian realized whether the girl next to him was really Umbai or someone else. Faced with Umbai's hesitation, Ian couldn't bear to continue avoiding the truth. But when he returned home, he couldn't stop thinking, while Umbai's mood was no better. She always felt deep down that she had stolen her sister and mother's happiness. Seeing this, she suggested to Umbai to transfer schools to start over. The next day, Ian acted normal as Umbai exercised and went to the movies. Just as Taekwong appeared out of nowhere, wanting to go watch together. Suddenly, a motorcycle rushed from behind. Both Taekwong and Ian reflexively protected Umbai. But Ian was quicker to embrace Umbai, leading Taekwon feeling bitter. Indeed, the heroine always receives love. Friends are always the main characters in our lives, and we all deserve to be loved. At lunchtime, Umbai intentionally mentioned trying out at So Young's company with Song Ju. This little trickster promptly called him and joked with Song Ju, and suggested ways for his uncle to fail Song Ju. But Umbai heard the entire conversation. She warned So Yian not to harm Song Ju. But is So Young really that kind-hearted? She saw Ian purposely highlighting Yunbai's similarity to her, from expressions to gestures, then put on a gentle face and left. Ian also didn't inquire about Yunbai and Yunbai with her, just mentioning their movie date and leaving. Back in class, Yunbai noticed that one of her books was missing. She suspected So Young, but there was no evidence. While the class did PE, Su Ian returned to the classroom, citing stomach pain. At the same time, Song Ju's friend was vehemently refusing to warn Ian Bai about So Young. UST when she was feeling down, Taekwong arrived and made Eun Bai smile again. Shortly after, the whole class became chaotic because everyone's computers suddenly couldn't boot up. No one could submit their group papers, it seemed. A classmate voiced suspicion towards So Young because she was absent during PE. But she lied and insisted she was at the medical room. Transitioning to Ian with his flawless physique, diligently working out. At this moment, he remembered Umbai asking him before how he would feel if she had a twin sister. Perhaps Ian was gradually realizing that it wasn't just Umbai's joke back then. And that evening, meeting Umbai at the movie theater, Ian felt conflicted, unintentionally becoming more distant from Umbai, and it seemed like Umbai felt the same way. However, Ian later took her to a teddy bear shop, seeing how much Umbai loved such teddy bears. Ian remembered how Umbai used to sew them together. Upon returning home with the teddy bear, they encountered Taekwon waiting at the bus stop. After Umbai got on the bus, Taekwon firmly affirmed that Umbai now is indeed Umbai. This made Ian's doubts about the current Umbai even greater. Transitioning to the classmates who discovered So Young's lie. Even though she claimed not to have touched the computers, nobody believed her. Even Umbai felt So Young was despicable, making her angry, wanting to subdue Umbai immediately. The cruel often live comfortably, and So Young has now received the handwriting analysis results from her father. The next day, Moon Bai was caught, confessed, and swiftly transferred schools. As she calmed down, So Young was also taken aback. Ian had been swimming for hours and was scolded by the coach for neglecting her physical fitness. After changing clothes, she received a message from So Young. It was a picture of Moon Bai at the orphanage with the students. Ian couldn't believe her eyes seeing Moon Bai so similar to herself. Then she met Moon Bai again. At this point, not knowing what Umbai was thinking, she mentioned remembering a past event. Immediately, Ian wanted Umbai to fulfill her wish. And that wish was for her to truly be Umbai. He was very angry when Yunbai apologized. Just then, as Taekwong rushed in to take Umbai away, Ian quickly grabbed her hand. Umbai also felt the same and let go of Taekwong's hand, then calmly admitted to Ian that she wasn't Umbai. Once again, Ian wanted to avoid this harsh truth. But Umbai felt very remorseful for hurting Ian so much. For this involuntary lie, everyone had their reasons for their own mistakes. But how could one muster the courage to face it? Turning to Eun by now, she realized that So Young was the one who revealed her identity to Ian. She looked smug confronting Eun by, appearing very detestable. At this point, Song Ju finally received her interview schedule. So Young hypocritically came over to encourage her, making her feel very grateful. Turning to Ian who didn't go to class and was sitting at home, looking at pictures of herself with Eun by when they were young, then went to talk to Eun by's mother. 
Unbai remained melancholic, but luckily, Taekwon was there to accompany and care for her. He even prepared food for Unbai to lift her spirits. Returning to the conversation between Unbai's mother and Ian, she also shared everything with him frankly. She was very sympathetic to Unbai's current mood, wanting to move and change schools for Unbai to start over. Turning to the homeroom teacher, who'd met with the class president, he also admitted to sabotaging the computers of other groups. With his computer broken, he didn't want to lose points like others, so he did it, bracing for any consequence. But the teacher was very patient and explained to him the price to pay if he kept lying. Meanwhile, Song Ju was also having a very smooth interview. The judges seemed very satisfied with her talent. On this side, Wumbai told Taekwon her plan to remove So Young and then transfer schools. She even gave Taekwon a glare that looked very annoying. Back at home, Wumbai looked at Ian's medal. She then rushed to the station to buy a ticket back to her hometown. Ian coincidentally came to buy a ticket to visit Unbai, presumed to have passed away. Unbai placed the medal right next to her sister's urn. As she stepped out of the cemetery, Unbai saw young children talking about themselves, unable to hold back tears at the heartbreaking stories of the children. Yian saw all this but remained silent and distant, showing no other emotions. On the way back to the city, a girl accidentally injured Yian and bandaged him. It reminded him of when Unbai did the same for herself when her mother passed away. Looking to his left, Yian caught Unbai's gaze in the adjacent car, but as the cars drove away, their eyes gradually lost each other. Upon returning home, Yian sat with a heavy heart and dined with his father. Unbai, too, woke up exhausted after a night's sleep. Seeing her mother still by her side helped her feel much warmer. Upon arrival at school, she heard that Songju had applied, and she also believed that what Unbai said was very true about So Young. In class, the teacher announced the end of the computer incident due to lack of evidence. The teacher also didn't want anyone to suspect anyone else and isolate friends. Unbai was exhausted to the point of illness, but seeing Yian's indifference made her very sad. However, there was always Taekwon silently making Unbai happy. Seemingly indifferent, Ian still went to the infirmary to glance at Unbai before leaving. After feeling better, the student teacher asked and encouraged Unbai. And this student teacher is also Shirjin's mother. As school ended, Unbai and her best friend discussed. When Taekwon pulled up in the car and took her away, leaving her friend furious, he suggested taking Unbai to the rooftop to overlook the city at night. There, Taekwon happily greeted her by her real name, Unbai. Only Taekwon truly knew Unbai's identity but still didn't change his attitude towards her. Because to Taekwon, whether she was called Unbai or Unbai didn't matter. As long as it was her, he would always happily welcome her. Switching scenes, Yian recalled Unbai's mother's words about Unbai being bullied, then turned sympathetic and said it was pity for Yian. At school, the teacher had seen the article accusing So Young of bullying a classmate to the point of depression, and of course, the other classmates also knew about it and showed disdain for her. Among them was Song Ju, who always considered So Young a good friend. Meanwhile, Taekwon thought Unbai was the one who posted that article. He didn't want So Young to be removed while Unbai still transferred schools. He hoped she would stay strong and stay. Meanwhile, Yian was preparing for the competition when she received a threatening message. They will reveal Unbai's secret to everyone. Ignoring the last seconds of the green light, he ran to school, crossing the street. Just at that moment, a car rushed and hit her directly, causing Yian extreme pain. On this side, So Young provocatively looked at Unbai. She admitted to being the one in that accusing article, and also revealed the one being bullied to that extent for everyone to know. Not surprisingly, everyone was surprised to see how similar Unbai and the Unbai they knew were. Teacher Taekwong immediately stood up to encourage Unbai, urging her to stand up and explain her family situation. Both understood each other, but Ian, who was supposed to be at the competition, spoke up an explanation instead of Unbai. So, all public opinion was once again pushed onto So Young, that she was the one who harmed Unbai's sister. At this point, even if So Young wanted to reveal that Unbai was in this class, hearing the news at school, So Young stayed silent about Unbai, feeling responsible and enduring humiliation quietly. Stepping out of the classroom, Yian couldn't bear the pain from the injury anymore and collapsed. Shortly after, the doctor's prognosis arrived, but it wasn't good, for recovery would take up to a year for Yian to be able to get back on his feet. His father and the councilman were both deeply troubled by this turn of events, but he didn't scold or show disappointment. Instead, he encouraged his son to make the most of this opportunity to rest and recuperate. Yian knew exactly how his father felt. Outside the door, Unbai stood barefoot, hesitant to visit Yian and eventually turned away. Unbai didn't dare to call and inquire about Yian. The next day, she showed up at Yian's hospital room door. Luckily, he caught sight of Unbai and courteously invited her in. Upon hearing Unbai's gratitude, he curtly replied he didn't do it for her and dismissed her. Even Taekwon couldn't escape it either. At this point, Yian also knew he would have to postpone training for a year. He was scolded by his coach but couldn't speak of the accident, just gritted his teeth and endured. Outside, Unbai heard everything and felt deeply ashamed of herself. Even the simple act of opening a water bottle was uncomfortable with Unbai now. 
Once again, Taekwon witnessed Eunbai crying over Yayan. Apart from supporting Eunbai, there was nothing more to be done. In truth, Yayan couldn't be blamed. Because deep down, he didn't feel comfortable at all. Cut to Soyoung continuously teasing Eunbai and receiving only her indifference. Unbeknownst to him, Songju overheard his bullying tone. From then on, she distanced herself from So Young even more during lunch breaks. After school, despite being rejected, Eunbai visited Yayan at the hospital. Feeling dejected, she went outside and sat alone, pouring out her heart through the door to Yayan. Time flew by, and finally, the day for Yayan to be discharged arrived. Cut to So Young shamelessly arranging to meet Song Ju to persuade her to sign a contract with their company, trying to pull her in. However, Song Ju immediately refused because she knew the scheme to alienate Eunbai from So Young. The path to fame for this girl is truly treacherous. The next day, during lunch break, fate made Yayan sit next to Eunbai again. When friends mentioned Yayan having difficulty eating with his left hand, Taekwong immediately served him food to prevent Eunbai from caring for Yayan. But Yayan promptly expressed disgust and pushed the meat away, embarrassing Taekwong. At this time, the school director, who is also Taekwong's father, was reinvestigating Shirjin's suicide case here. When Eunbai's class record book was needed, the student teacher delivered it to the principal's office. Seeing him investigating Shirjin's character, the student teacher was pleased and called her mother. Under the pressure from So Young's mother, with all the evidence pointing to Eunbai impersonating Eunbai, the principal decided to expel the girl and came up with very trivial reasons to force the homeroom teacher to work with transferring parents. But the next moment, he realized that his son Taekwon was very close to Eunbai. Cut to the cemetery where the coffin of Eunbai was placed, a familiar figure was staring at it. At that moment, Eunbai's mother confronted the principal and homeroom teacher, pushing to expel her daughter with flimsy excuses. Then seeing negotiations were impossible, the school issued a notice of Eunbai's expulsion, surprising everyone. Taekwon alone understood that this was related to his father because of the hidden words about Eunbai he had said. Meanwhile, So Young triumphantly confronted Eunbai. Her mother arrived, and she also recognized this little one as the bully who bullied Eunbai before, returning to the broken computer incident, when the teacher declared that someone brave confessed, so no one would be penalized. However, the whole class still believed it was So Young, which made the class president, who had made the mistake, unable to sit still, she boldly stood up to admit to everyone while apologizing. Additionally, the class president had to endure a minor punishment of organizing books in the library, because the teacher said that a deceitful mind needed labor as the best relief, right when books fell from his hands. Seeing this, Eunbai rushed to help, making the class president grateful. He also remembered seeing Eunbai in the classroom on the night Shirjin died. But now the person he thought was Eunbai turned out to be Eunbai, so she had no idea what had happened between Shirjin and her sister. The scene where Eunbai deliberately waited for Yayan at home, she worried about his health, but he still maintained a disdainful attitude and entered the house. After a long silence in front of Yayan's house, Eunbai left. Unknown to her, Yayan was still watching her from the upstairs window. Returning home, Eunbai's mother had recognized that So Young had bullied Eunbai since they were in the hospital. Eunbai's silence about studying with So Young left her mother deeply worried. Eunbai's mother planned to transfer her to another school to avoid conflict with So Young, because facing So Young made her remember more painful memories. But Eunbai insisted on finishing something before transferring. Her mother could only support and encourage her daughter. Cut to seeing Eunbai pulling up in front of her house, Yayan's father invited her in for dinner. Seeing their unusual silence, he absentmindedly asked if they had fought, knowing they were close, but he didn't receive any answer. When bidding farewell to Eunbai, he reminded her to cheer Yayan up. He eagerly pushed the boat for his son and Eunbai so that Yayan could take Eunbai home. The next morning, Songju gave Eunbai and Su Yayan each a cute bag. Just then, the student teacher passed by, casting ambiguous glances at them. Yayan was lost in thought, staring at the water in the pool. Then Eunbai appeared, speaking her heart out, making Yayan extremely uncomfortable. Despite Eunbai expressing happiness at being able to continue living and meeting Yayan, he only looked at her with a cold gaze before leaving her by the pool. After leaving the pool, Eunbai received a message. Under So Young's name, a message urged her to return to the classroom. With all the questions needing answers in her mind, Eunbai daringly stepped in. Immediately, a shadow appeared, calling Eunbai's name and greeting her in a very sinister tone. Approaching her step by step, she asked what Eunbai did on the day Shirjin died, blaming her for abandoning Shirjin. She wanted Eunbai to experience loneliness, so she locked Eunbai in the classroom. Looking closely, this person was none other than the student teacher. As Eunbai was about to call for help, her phone coincidentally ran out of battery at the worst time. She tried to call for help in vain. In a stroke of luck, the homeroom teacher, while checking the corridor, discovered Eunbai. The teacher took her out of the school and met Yayan running over. Seeing that Eunbai's teacher didn't seem to want to talk about what happened, he came up with some excuse so Yayan wouldn't suspect. Then Yayan kindly escorted her home. Meanwhile, Taekwon, unable to contact her, anxiously ran to Eunbai's house and met the two. He even showed adorable jealousy. Everyone. If I were the female lead, 
I would love both of them. The next day, the teacher asked Dun Bai, but she didn't see the face of the one who locked her up. At this point, she informed the teacher about the message from Sher Jean. The teacher encouraged Dun Bai who was confused. Shortly after, she identified the student teacher as the sender through the camera. Just then, she also walked up to the classroom with the homeroom teacher. Dun Bai noticed the teacher's voice was similar to the one from the previous night. While pondering, she received a text from Tae Kwong asking her to meet him on the rooftop. Hearing her curiosity about Sher Jean, Tae Kwong recalled the case file. He had seen it in his father's office. But he could only disclose to her that Eun Bai was the first to discover when Sher Jean died. Leaving the rooftop, she encountered the student teacher again. Hearing this teacher's voice, Eun Bai instinctively avoided her. Meanwhile, the homeroom teacher discovered that the student teacher was Sher Jean's biological sister. Simultaneously, he received a dinner invitation from her. Wanting to clarify his doubts, the teacher agreed immediately. Meanwhile, Yayan learned that Eun Bai was transferring schools but didn't have the courage to keep her here. Feeling that Yayan was no longer indifferent, Eun Bai smiled happily. Cut to the teacher and the student teacher at the bar, the teacher feigned drunkenness and confessed that he couldn't protect Sher Jean. Revealing the true face of Min Young, but can the pain of losing a loved one be soothed by a belated apology? The next morning, Tae Kwon wanted to speak with his long-land contacted mother, but he lacked the courage when he heard her voice on the other end of the line. While his mood was slowly dissipating, he ran into the villainous So Young, eagerly anticipating the disciplinary meeting to expel Eun Bai. She seemed to think she had won against. Meanwhile, Eun Bai met Min Young in the hallway. Straightforwardly confronting both parties immediately, Eun Bai was very surprised to hear her confessing to being Sher Jean's sister. It's also because she wants everyone to remember her unfortunate sibling forever. Time shifts back to a year before Sher Jean's death. The initial days of their reunion were joyful. But due to Sher Jean's gentle nature, she quickly became a target for bullying. Along with Eun Bai's indifference and the homeroom teacher's apathy, the isolated girl experienced something terrible. Back to the present, the teacher also steps forward and learns the truth that Sher Jean's death wasn't a suicide but due to encephalitis. But due to the late diagnosis, Sher Jean had to leave in loneliness. The teacher also feels extremely guilty. Amidst boiling water, an article about Sher Jean's character resulting from the school's indifference has sparked community dissatisfaction. Putting immense pressure on the school board and Tae Kwon's father. Switching scenes, Eun Bai's mother comforts her before the disciplinary meeting. She expresses her desire for Eun Bai to have a good new start at a new school with a famous name like Eun Bai's, making her feel grateful and happier than ever before. The next day, upon waking up, Eun Bai met Ian and hoped he would treat her as before, still seeing her as Eun Bai for just one day. Eun Bai also returned the medal to Yayan, reminding him how important it is to believe in himself, and to recover as quickly as possible to return to being an athlete as before. However, Eun Bai thinks that she has influenced Yayan's future a lot, so she said disappearing would be something that helps Yayan return to his old self. After bidding farewell on the last bus, Yayan sent her a message and expressed his thoughts. Calling her by her own name, Eun Bai. People truly love her because she's herself, not a substitute for Eun Bai. Immediately after, Taekwon pushed Eun Bai into a difficult situation, when he also expressed his feelings for her. The next day, the disciplinary meeting took place, but Eun Bai's mother boldly declared she would transfer her daughter to another school. You can clearly see the disappointment with this school on her face. While packing to leave, someone remotely unlocked the door with the house's password. Startling her as it was Eun Bai who had actually appeared. Only when her mother called out did she recognize her daughter, Eun Bai. She just kept apologizing to her mother, and the two hugged each other emotionally, a scene that Eun Bai from upstairs witnessed. She confessed to her mother that when she first saw the person at home, she hoped it was Eun Bai, not herself. Also saying that if Eun Bai hadn't lied back then, Eun Bai would have been the one adopted. And Eun Bai has always known that her sister quietly observed and protected her, saving her when she wanted to give up her life. And Eun Bai also sees what happened to Sher Jean as her own fault. Just wanting to avoid Sher Jean, to avoid all the fear that surrounded her for so long, now Eun Bai decides to return to face everything. It's only from deep within that Eun Bai feels liberated. After all, the two sisters, for the first time, admire their own star, laugh and sleep together, leaving both truly shaken. Eun Bai also has more motivation to correct her past mistakes. The next day, Eun Bai actually returned to school with her two selves. Coincidentally, just as So Young was arrogantly accusing Eun Bai of being an imposter, she still remained undeterred with her arguments. While Eun Bai, confidently, reaffirmed herself as Eun Bai and that she wouldn't transfer, Eun Bai's gaze also became sharp, revealing the injustices Sher Jean had done to her younger sister. When she wanted to discipline So Young, she said a really cool sentence. Using violence to solve violence is called inferior. By now, Taekwon still thinks she's Eun Bai, so he pushes her out of habit. Then being beaten made him realize everything instantly. Not caring much, just asking about Eun Bai, he immediately rushed to her house, while Eun Bai at this time has returned home with her mother's affectionate return. Saying goodbye to a past full of wounds. 
but in return, there are sincere feelings from Jia Jean and the others. That's why Yunbai decided to stay here for a while to sort things out. Though reluctant to see Yunbai go, her mother respected her decision, only hoping for her eventual return. UST as she bid her mother goodbye, Yunbai was startled to see Taekwon here. While scolding her for leaving without saying a word, she was pinched by his friends. Turns out, the little kids thought he was bad, so they protected big sister Yunbai. With Taekwon here, it feels like Yunbai has another little sibling. Upon meeting, he immediately badmouthed Yunbai and then hit himself. Knowing that Taekwon was very kind and caring towards her, and Yunbai is very grateful that he let her be herself when she was with him. However, Yunbai's feelings for Taekwon can never be returned. Switching scenes to Ian, he's happy to receive a call from Yunbai. They agree to meet on the bridge. At this point, Ian still doesn't know she's the real Yunbai, until he realizes she doesn't know anything about his injured shoulder. She recalls their interactions before Unbai vanished. Ian, perplexed, looks at Unbai, and she also admits that she's really Unbai. But Unbai doesn't even think about Ian's feelings at this point. Even his becoming angry seems irrational to her. Switching scenes, Unbai talks to the teacher about her obsession with So Young. From a year ago until now, it's still ongoing. She also wants to explain everything and apologize to So Young. Struggling through this period has not been easy for those involved. Here, Unbai and Taekwon are playing with the kids. But little does Yunbai know that Soyoung has discovered she's alive. And she's revealed why Ian was attacked for protecting Yunbai, even though she wasn't the real one. Faced with Soyoung's question about whether Ian likes Yunbai or Yunbai, she thought it would cause division but realized she targeted the wrong person, because Yunbai is not as easy to manipulate as she thought. Doesn't that feel satisfying? Yunbai doesn't harbor jealousy towards her younger sister because of it. She also shares with Ian about Taekwon visiting the orphanage to see her. At this point, he's also been sent away by Unbai. Taekwon says he'll wait and doesn't want to hear Unbai's answer, then turns and runs away. Next, Unbai receives a call from her mother, informing her that the adoption paperwork is completed. Not only that, her mother encourages her to study hard to fulfill her dream of becoming a teacher in the future. Switching scenes to the cemetery, Unbai meets a friend and learns that, the day she disappeared, that friend found her ID card, and left it next to a decaying corpse by the river, thinking it was Unbai, which caused the misunderstanding like today. However, Unbai doesn't blame her friend and embraces her for comfort. Back at school, Unbai, now with her previous arrogance, puzzles her close friends, who think she must have recovered her memory so quickly. Then, Ian goes to the gym and is encouraged by the teacher to try to return to training and competition. At the orphanage, Unbai's home, she's showing her little sister Ian's gold medal and remembering the memories with him. Seeing Unbai seeming sad, her little sister encourages her to return to Seoul quickly to live happily and just come back here to visit everyone on important occasions. At school, the homeroom teacher submitted a resignation letter to the chairman, feeling that he has not fulfilled his responsibility to protect the students and cause the consequences like today. At Yian's house, he learns that Taekwon came to the orphanage yesterday to visit Unbai, so he comes to inquire about the situation to ease his worries. Switching scenes to the roadside, Unbai finds So Young calling the bully's ringleader, saying that Unbai has returned to the orphanage and wants to plot against her, but Unbai arrived at the scene to warn her and smashed So Young's phone. Unbai warns So Young not to bully her younger sister anymore and left, leaving So Young feeling helpless. Later, Unbai went to meet Taekwong at the library to discuss the mysterious death of Shirjin. They suspect that the report of Shirjin's death was forged and there are many inconsistencies in this case. That night, Taekwong went to see the homeroom teacher to confide, and the teacher revealed to Taekwong that his father is involved in Shirjin's mysterious death. Taekwong feels extremely helpless and sad. He returns home and advises his father to take responsibility. After persuasion from his son, Taekwong's father finally accepts the truth. The next morning, he confesses to the police and is taken to the investigation headquarters. Father and son part ways with each other with regretful eyes, but Taekwong fully accepts the truth. As for Unbai, after returning from the orphanage to Seoul, she meets Ian to return his commemorative gold medal. It's time to return it to its rightful owner. Ian apologizes for avoiding Unbai before due to internal conflicts. But now that everything is clear, he hopes they can return to normal, which makes Unbai very happy. Switching scenes, Taekwon falls ill due to his father's arrest, deeply upset. Fortunately, Unbai called and found out, so she took him to the hospital. She also used Taekwon's phone to call his mother, and his mother came to take care of Taekwon. Afterwards, the two of them talked a lot. Taekwon's mother feels very guilty for leaving Taekwon. She also thanks Unbai for being with Taekwon during this time, which puts her mind somewhat at ease. After Taekwon's mother leaves, he also wakes up. He thanks Unbai for being there when he felt most lonely. The next morning, Unbai gathered the courage to go to Shirjin's house. She met Shirjin's older sister, who is also her internship teacher. She showed Unbai the memories the two of them had kept. Because Unbai was the only friend Shirjin ever had, he two sisters poured their hearts out, and Unbai apologized for not being able to protect Shirjin. Shirjin's older sister doesn't blame her and forgives her. 
After being discharged from the hospital, Taekwon feels so bored and lonely at home, so he invited Umbai to hang out and eat to relax. While eating, Umbai gave Taekwon the gift his mother had sent earlier. After finishing their meal, Taekwon escorted Umbai home. He expressed that time with Umbai felt meaningful and passed quickly. Then, Ian approached and unexpectedly kissed Umbai. At that moment, Yian, witnessing the scene from behind, felt utterly defeated. Umbai was quite surprised by the kiss, and Taekwon pretended to be innocent, not knowing anything, which was adorable. Feeling embarrassed, they bid each other goodbye and went home. Poor Yian stood there, speechless. The next morning, the two boys agreed to talk on the rooftop. Yian confessed that he really likes Unbai and he'll never give up on that. Taekwon also showed no signs of backing down, and so, they began their battle for their love from then on. Later, when Unbai was out playing, she confronted Taekwon, not wanting him to have feelings for her younger sister. Infuriated, he promptly asked Unbai to meet him at the park. The awkwardness from the previous night's kiss lingered, causing Unbai to turn and leave. Taekwon followed suit, teasing Unbai further. At school, So Young felt bitter as he was being avoided by his friends. Thinking that Umbai was behind this, the two argued in the restroom. But this time, Umbai stood up to So Young, teaching him a lesson about strength, which made So Young furious, smashing the mirror. After school, So Young went to fix his phone and asked the store owner to restore all the data in it. Upon receiving her phone back, she found images and videos of herself bullying Umbai before and began planning her revenge. The next morning, the homeroom teacher packed up and began his leave. The students bid farewell to him with regret. They sent him heartfelt wishes and promised to meet again, deeply moved. In another scene, Taekwon dressed up in a chic outfit and wore the tie his mother had given him. Then, he visited his father in prison, making him very happy. His father praised Taekwon's tie, admiring its appearance. Taekwon expressed missing his father and harboring no resentment. As the visit ended, Taekwon returned home and shed a few tears, deeply moved by the heartfelt conversation with his father. The next morning, Unbai came to school for the last time to bid farewell to her friends. So Young realized the person at school was Unbai and called her elder sister to threaten her, saying, Hurry up and come to school, or I'll publicly release the video of Unbai being bullied to everyone. Upon hearing this, Unbai immediately rushed there. At school, after class, Unbai bravely stood in front of the entire class to say a few words. But unexpectedly, Unbai also arrived and barged into the classroom. The scene left everyone shocked. Seizing the opportunity, So Young stood up to reveal the identity of the two sisters, and the truth that Unbai was still alive. However, Unbai boldly defended her sister against those suspicious glances. Unbai then dragged So Young outside and warned her to quickly produce the bullying video. At this point, So Young was too embarrassed because Unbai threatened her. In class, Unbai apologized to everyone for having lied throughout the time. The classmates were quite surprised, but after Unbai's sincere explanations and apologies, everyone accepted and overlooked that matter. On the other hand, after tricking So Young into admitting that she was the one who filmed the clip, Unbai recorded it again and used it to threaten So Young. At this point, So Young was overwhelmed because Unbai threatened her. With a sharp look, Unbai warned So Young never to appear in front of her again and never do anything bad. After that, Unbai went outside and sat alone. But Yian came to comfort her and even played music for her to forget her sorrow. The next day, Unbai met her close friends, and they were suspicious, not knowing if she was the same Unbai or the kind one. Later, in the classroom, the new homeroom teacher was introduced to all the students. The teacher's mix of encouragement and warnings left the class pensive. That evening, after the extra class ended, Taekwon waited for Unbai outside the classroom to accompany her home. Upon reaching the door, they encountered Yian, who also came to take Unbai home. Yian held Unbai's hand to take her home. But feeling awkward, Unbai chose to go home alone. That night, at home, their mother announced to both sisters that she would sell the shop and move to another place for a fresh start for both sisters. Both sisters agreed with that decision. Next, Unbai told her mother about her plan to study abroad, which surprised her. During lunch break the next day, Unbai told her friends she'd transfer schools and study abroad, which surprised her friends, who wanted to organize one last outing. After hearing that news, Taekwon made an appointment to talk to Unbai privately. Unbai thanked Taekwon for treating her well all this time, but she declined the affection that Taekwon had for her, leaving him quite sad. Taekwon tried to console her, saying that he had already known that, so it was okay. Meanwhile, Unbai and Yian were discussing her plans to study abroad by the pool. After the recent events, Unbai wanted to go far to experience and explore for personal growth. She also encouraged Yian to strive for success in the upcoming exams. At So Young's house, her father was reprimanding her for her foolish actions, which became gossip on social media. It had a significant impact on his candidacy, so he warned So Young never to repeat such mistakes. 
The next morning, So Young made an appointment to meet Umbai privately. So Young felt deeply regretful for her actions, and the video clip was no longer a concern. She also thanked her sister, Umbai, for teaching her a lesson and helping her realize her mistakes. Umbai also comforted So Young and assured her that she would always be there to listen if she needed someone to talk to. These words deeply moved So Young. Switching to another scene, Taekwon was feeling very sad after being rejected. The teacher noticed his despondency and offered sincere advice about love matters. After the class ended, Taekwon waited for Umbai and invited her to talk. Here, Taekwon expressed his decision to move on and no longer have feelings for her. Then he told her to go home alone, but later chased after her to hold her back. Then Taekwon confessed he couldn't forget her. He couldn't stop liking her and would wait for Umbai forever, and he hoped she would understand his sincere feelings. The next morning, while packing, the two sisters and Bai confided in each other. Umbai urged her sister to accept her feelings for Ian and not hold them back. Accept those feelings and don't hold on to them forever. Afterward, Umbai and Yayan met on the bridge and confided in each other. Umbai confessed that she really liked Yayan. But for now, she just wants to clarify herself and wait for the right time. Yayan also said he would be patient and accept the wait. He gave Umbai a medal as a farewell gift between them. Then, at the National Swimming Championship, Yayan performed exceptionally well and won the overall victory. Umbai returned to her old school with her friends, sporting a new, sleek hairstyle. Taekwon, upon receiving Umbai's text message, hurried to find her and was extremely delighted that she had returned. Finally, life continued joyfully, with students continuing to strive on their paths towards their dreams and hoping for a bright future ahead. All mistakes and grudges were forgiven, and love prevailed in happiness. Umbai chose to study abroad and prepared to return home for a visit. Then, on the bus Umbai met Yayan again and teased him just as he had teased her before. Both were delighted to meet again, and the school story comes to an end here. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching. Now it's time to say goodbye. See you again. Goodbye.